So I've had the K40 laser for a few months now and I have kind of a good idea of what is really needed to uh, get this working well in your shop. The K40 is a 40 watt laser uh, and you can pick them up on eBay for around $350 to $400 or so. You'll come across like a red machine and a blue machine. Uh, the important thing is, is uh, the meter. Uh, the red ones typically have a digital readout uh, which sounds really enticing but unfortunately it's not all that useful because what it's doing is measuring percentage of power. Uh, what you're looking for is something with an analog reader uh, such as this. Uh, not nearly as sexy but it has a heck of a lot better information and all this is measured in milliamps and that's how much power is going to the laser. And this is especially important like if you're going on to some of these online communities and you're sharing some of your settings or help, uh, need to help troubleshooting, uh, they're going to want to know what, uh, how many milliamps that you're uh, running through the laser. Because uh, honestly, 10% or 20%, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. There's no real hard concrete numbers uh, that people could reference. So if you're in the market for a brand new one, look for the blue ones with the analog uh, readout and uh, that's basically the one you're looking for. The K40 unboxed and I was able to cut almost immediately. I plugged it in, sent a file through there and I was able to do a nice engraving. That has been my experience. I know some people have to fiddle around with it but everything that I got in the box, everything, all the um, all the mirrors and the lenses were adjusted just right uh, so right out of the box, I plugged it in and I was off to the races. So let's talk real quick about what comes with the K40 laser. Obviously, you're going to get the laser itself, uh, but you're also going to get a fan that goes into the back. One thing about the fan that a lot of people have discovered is the wiring is a little bit sketchy. So you might want to open it up, make sure everything is uh, sealed and wire, wire nutted together. Um, mine seemed okay, but... Um, a lot of people uh, had some real problems with it. A lot of people don't like the way the fan fits on there. Uh, all I do is I just kind of snug it up against here and put a little bit of duct tape around the edge uh, to kind of seal it up a little bit. It is a really loose fit. It's not very good, but it works fine. It also comes with an exhaust uh, hose. Uh, it's like a dryer vent type hose, but it's made out of this really cheap plastic. I'm still using mine. You're going to get a package with a bunch of software in it. Throw away. We'll talk about software here in a little bit. Uh, there's a much better way of doing it. Uh, you'll also get a uh, USB cable that connects to your computer. The USB cable they provided was really cheap uh, and it didn't really work very well. So I ended up replacing that with something that I had lying around. You'll also get a water pump. A water pump will keep water cycling through the laser to keep the laser tube nice and cool. Uh, and that's basically it. What you're going to have to provide, though, is a bucket. A bucket to hold the water to cool the laser. And in that bucket, you're going to put uh, distilled water. And it's important that you use distilled water. You don't want to use tap water because it has a lot of minerals in it. And as it's going through the laser tube, it's going to cause a lot of arcing and reduce the life of your laser. I drilled a couple of holes. Uh, to for the inlet and outlet of the um, of the uh, submersible pump and uh, that allows me to cycle it through. You got to run cold water through the laser tube and the easiest way I do it is I just get these two liter bottles I freeze them in the freezer and then I'll take two of these things and I'll drop these into the water bucket. As you start working with it you're going to quickly discover uh, some major shortcomings. Uh, the very first thing is the bed. The problem with the bed is that there's a very small cutting area with the bed that was included with the K40. Uh, by removing that bed, you get a lot more space that you could work with, and you could also work with different, different thicknesses of material. Uh, so that's probably the very first thing you're going to want to replace. Now, the way I did mine is I got one of these um, scissor jacks. These are called lab jacks. They use them for like Bunsen burners and beakers and stuff like that. But you can find these on uh, on Amazon uh, really cheap. And uh, this is a great way to kind of raise and lower your 
um, your cutting surface. Uh, a little bit of double stick tape with a piece of scrap wood in there. And then uh, I could uh, just put this on the bottom and then I could raise and lower my platform as needed. One of the other things that is useful is a way to uh, raise your work piece up to a certain level uh, so that um, there isn't like flash burning from underneath. Uh, also kind of reduces the smoke. Also able to pull the smoke away from your project. And I used to use a number of things like uh, with some bolts to just kind of raise my uh, my piece that I'm trying to cut. Uh, recently I just went to uh, Home Depot and I grabbed one of these uh, vents and uh, they have these little slats on there and that works pretty good. So the next big upgrade that I did is I replaced the laser head uh, with this uh, this blue one and the main reason why I wanted to do that is that I wanted to upgrade the lens. This one uh, only holds like a small lens and the one that I wanted had a little bit different focal point but it was a wider lens. And I also like the idea that it came with a air assist. What happens is that you could get some air coming in through here off to the side and then it blows air across the lens and down through this this uh, nozzle down here. It sounded really good on paper but it didn't really work as well as I would hope. Uh, what I've been finding is that the laser as it shoots down was kind of hitting the rim here and it was deflecting off of this rim and giving me a ghosting effect. Now one of the things that you should probably do when you replace this head is uh, take like a sharpie marker like a fine point sharpie marker and trace the outline of of where this is and maybe put a little tick mark at uh, the center of this and on to the carriage you're gonna have to realign this laser and it's so much easier to be able to have some sort of point of reference uh, so you can kind of get into the ballpark as you're trying to focus this laser the mirrors for the K40 laser and the lenses aren't terribly expensive. So you might want to have a few extra on hand. Uh, the lens and the mirrors that come with the K40, as you can imagine, are pretty cheap. Uh, but you can find them online over on Amazon uh, that are pretty inexpensive. And it's nice to have a few on hand uh, just in case they do burn out. I did have uh, this one burn out. And then, of course, I replaced the uh, lens on the K40. So the next thing I upgraded was the air assist. We talked a little bit about how this came with an air assist, but this one just didn't work very well. So what I ended up doing is actually 3D printing my own. The air is more directed to the workpiece as opposed to the lens. Uh, the purpose of an air assist is to, first of all, blow away the smoke so it's not going up on the lens. It's blowing work, uh, air onto the workpiece, which will kind of clear some debris. Blow air onto the area that you're engraving, making it cut a little bit hotter. Lastly, it blows out any fires that may uh, happen because lasers are hot and they catch things on fire. I'm not going to say that the air assist is fire prevention. It is not. Uh, never leave your laser alone. And always have a fire extinguisher close by. Uh, that's pretty important as well. I'll put a link to the Fingerverse file that I used uh, for mine. And as you can see, that there's like a little hose that comes in on the uh, on the air assist. It just goes to this aquarium pump that I have mounted to the wall. I don't have it turned on right now because it is a little bit loud. But um, this aquarium pump is. Uh, I think it's for more like larger um, larger fish tanks, but I, I, you probably could use just about any kind of aquarium pump, uh, but this is the one that I see a lot of people use on, um, on uh, the forum and Facebook and stuff. As the aquarium pump comes through, uh, sometimes it gets in the way, and that's why I have this drag chain. This again is another 3D printed drag chain. Uh, I'll put a link to that. And then one additional piece of equipment that I purchased was this inline blower. I just have it hooked up to this exhaust uh, tube that they gave me. And then I just have a PVC pipe that I stick over the top of it and feed it outside of my garage. I just lift the garage a little bit and uh, exhaust it out there. Um, I'll try to find a better solution for that, but for now this works pretty good. Uh, so this works in conjunction with this exhaust fan. Um, so I use them both. 
Uh, it, this just gives it a little bit more air velocity to really move the smoke out of the shop. And lastly, let's talk about software. The software that comes with your K40, I would just pitch it into the trash. Honestly, I don't know anybody who actually uses it. I would be a little bit sketched out about installing that type of stuff on my own home computer. A better option is to download a program called K40 Whisperer. It's a free program. You can download it and it speaks directly to your K40. You install it, you open it up, you click initialize laser and it pops right into action and you're ready to either do uh, a raster engrave, a uh, vector engrave, as well as cut. K40 Whisperer works with uh, DXF files and SVG files. I tend to work with SVG files and I use a program called Inkscape. Inkscape is also a free piece of software and it works in a very similar way as Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape is what I use almost all the time uh, and it's super powerful and you could do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So all you do is save something as an SVG file, open it up in K40 Whisperer, line up your work, hit engrave, and you're done. There are paid programs out there like Lightburn. Uh, those will work with the K40 the way it is, but uh, all the really cool features, uh, you do need to upgrade the uh, controller board uh, to something that uh, will be able to control things like power uh, straight out of the box. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of use out of Lightburn. Uh, so I just use K40 Whisper and Inkscape. Uh, eventually I'll upgrade the controller and have a few more options. But uh, right now, it seems to work just fine for me. So one more thing that you'll probably want to do as you're working with your K40 Whisper, it takes a lot of tinkering and trial and error. And as you're doing a lot of trial and error, it's, it's important to take good notes so that if you ever come back to a project a little bit later, uh, you know what kind of settings that you need to uh, send to your uh, laser. Uh, and that's why I use something like OneNote. Uh, there's a lots of notes taking software out here, out there, but I just have like different uh, materials like uh, plexiglass, cardboard, leather, uh, glass, ceramic tiles, uh, naturally wood. And in each one of these things I have like a little grid and it kind of tells me uh, some of the important information like what kind of cut is it? Is it a raster cut or is it a raster engraving or is it a vector engrave? Is it a cut? And I, I kind of list out what the speed was, what the power was, how many passes I did on that, and then a few extra notes. And sometimes I'll include some photographs. Uh, this is really helpful if you ever come back and you're like, okay, I'm gonna be doing some slate tiles. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my slate tiles. I know that raster, I like to go at about a speed of 300, uh, what is it, millimeters per second, uh, power of eight milliamps with one pass. And that gives me a pretty good solid graphic. Uh, but maybe if I'm doing something with photos, maybe I want the power to be 10 to 12 and I do maybe two passes. As you can see, I haven't done a whole lot of upgrades to it. Uh, I removed the bed, added a uh, scissor jack to the bed, uh, added air assist, uh, added an extra blower uh, to the exhaust fan. And that's about it. And that does quite a bit of stuff for me and I'm able to make a lot of really cool projects. That's all I have. I hope you found this video useful. If you found it useful, hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out an awful lot. But uh, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.